So we all have movies in our collection that we just can't stand. No matter how hard we try, no matter how close we get, we just can't seem to get rid of these titles. Everything in you is telling you to get rid of this film because you just don't like it and you never will. But that little voice in the back of your head says, no, maybe you'll like it someday. So you keep it in the days and the weeks and the months and the years that go by and you just can't understand why you still have this thing in your collection. Every single time you pass it, you just want to throw up. Oh, you're telling me you don't have that problem? It's just me? Well, today, guys, we're talking about the movies in my collection that I hate the most. Let's do it. Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything, physical media and entertainment. I am Ken. Today, guys, we're going to talk about the movies in my collection that I hate the most. Now, before we get into this topic, guys, hit that subscribe button for me, hit that like button for me, and comment down below. Don't be afraid, okay? Let me know, because a lot of you guys out there, that you want to act like you only collect the movies that you love and you only keep the movies that you love and you get rid of everything else. I want your honest answers. I want your honest comments. Do you all keep movies in your collection that you do not like? If you do, let me know what those titles are in that comment section below. And be honest. A couple of days ago, well, I think it was about a week now, I got a comment, I think, from a live stream that I did. I must have talked about a movie in my collection that I didn't like, and I, I still keep it for some reason. And they asked, look, I want your honest I want your honest answer. I, I, I honestly want to know. It was coming from a place of genuine curiosity, I think. Um, I honestly want to know, why do people hold on to movies that they don't like in their collection or they hate in their collection? Why do they keep those movies? Why don't they just go ahead and get rid of them? Why don't they just go ahead and sell them, take them to the Goodwill, do whatever with them? And, you know, I, it got me thinking. I'm like, I could just answer this comment or I could make an entire video about the movies in my collection um, that I hate the most and just talk about them and talk about uh, the reasons why I keep these particular movies because it's really kind of different for every movie that I keep in the collection that I do not like. There's different reasons. So I thought I'd bring over several examples. They may, there may be some other examples back there that I, that I couldn't think of, but these are the movies and hate's really a strong word, guys. It's really a strong word. I, I do hate a, a few of these, but I don't hate every single one of these. I don't like any of these movies very much at all, though. I will say that. Uh, but there's only maybe two or three of these that I just absolutely hate, downright loathe as movies, and never want to watch again no matter what. But again, you're asking me, why do you keep those in your collection, Ken? Well, I'm going to tell you, because the reasons are all different. They're all over the place, and they all fit just the, the place that I am right now in collecting. I'm not saying that I'm going to feel the same way five years from now. Five years from now, I could up and say, I just want to keep the movies that I love the most in the collection and let's get rid of everything else. And maybe I keep 200 movies. I could feel that way. I don't know. It could happen maybe five years, maybe 10 years, maybe tomorrow. I wake up and say, this is stupid. I just want to get rid of all this stuff. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, but it could. You never know where you're going to be uh, tomorrow, a year, whatever. So this is how I feel at this point um, in time. I can tell you why I keep these movies in my collection. I will say right off the top, a common theme that will come up is, and I think this is really the main reason why I keep a lot of these titles, is because we change over time. We evolve as humans over time. And sometimes it takes us a couple of watches for these movies for them to really click. There are movies that we just don't like the first time that we may love the second time. That's happened to me before. I don't know if it's happened to you or not. Everybody's different, right? Like some people, they know they hate something and they never watch it again. Or as soon as they're firm in their opinion on something, they never change it. There's people like that. And there's people um, that, you know, they view a movie a, a couple of times before they like really get into it, really get involved with it. I'm of this opinion, like our movie tastes change with the movies that we watch. Like the more movies that we watch, the more perspective we have on cinema in general. So how I feel about one of these movies now may change after I've seen 200 other movies that kind of color my perspective on that particular film. That's just my thought process. So I may return to one of these in five years and I may love it. So I, I, I just think that's interesting. So like there are some movies that I don't like very much or I think are just kind of mediocre. Um, that I want to love and I want to go back and I want to see what everybody else has seen because I've got some movies here guys that people love um, I really do I'm not trying to upset anybody I really just don't like these movies and I want to talk about them 
Uh, but there's some movies in here that people love. So I want to I want to see what those people see. So maybe I'm, I'm kind of keeping them in the collection, just uh, hoping that someday I love these movies as much as everybody else. But let's go ahead and start with this one off the top. And I will say, I still hate this movie with every fiber of my being. I hate this movie. Um, but I'm starting to warm up to the idea of maybe one day, 10, 15 years from now, um, thinking this movie is kind of sort of okay. Um, I still hate it though. I still really hate it. And that's, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, so this is like the choice. Like if somebody says, do you have a movie in your collection that you hate or don't like? I always bring up Rob Zombie's Halloween. And the main reason I keep this in the collection is because it's a part of the franchise, right? And that theme's going to come up again um, in this video. It's a part of the Halloween franchise. I don't want to have an incomplete Halloween collection. Now, they haven't put these out on 4K yet, this one or the uh, Rob Zombie second Halloween, which I actually like. Like, a lot of people don't like the second Halloween. I appreciate that one more because it's Rob Zombie doing more of his own thing. I loved Halloween so much. I was just the biggest Halloween fan. I, I grew up loving Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, but when I discovered Halloween, like everything changed for me. I just became the biggest Halloween fan. Rewatched those movies all the time. I loved them all the way up until... Re I even liked Resurrection, guys. I went to the theater to see Resurrection. It was my first Halloween film in the theaters. I, I liked Resurrection. This movie came out and I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Rob Zombie's directing a Halloween film. I loved House of a Thousand Corpses. I loved The Devil's Rejects. thought those were really good movies. And I love Rob Zombie as a musician. So I was very excited for this movie. And oh my God, the, the wind was just taken out of my sails in the first like 45 minutes of this movie because I hated the origin story. I just couldn't, I can't stand um, the idea of going back and explaining Michael Myers. That goes against everything um, he is as a character, like he's unexplainable. He's the shape. He's the force. I did an entire video on this guys. Like in the very early days of the channel, you can go back and check it out. If you want to go back far enough, it's about four years ago now. Uh, it just says why I hate Rob Zombie's Halloween. And I talk for like 30 minutes why I don't like this movie, but you know, it, it, take all the white trash stuff out of it. Like the, the Michael Myers having a white trash family, his mom's a stripper, all that stuff, whatever. Like that's fine. If they wanted to have that in there, I get it. That's the Rob Zombie influence, but I just hate having to explain. I just hate explaining Michael Myers, you know, him killing a hamster. Like when you first meet him, like that's not Michael Myers. Like he's a normal sweet boy. And then he just for no reason kills his sister one night. Like that's what makes him so terrifying as a character. So them going back and trying to explain him and giving backstory, I was not on board for that. Like maybe if I wasn't a big Halloween fan and I was just kind of a, you know, a casual Halloween fan, I guess. And I went to go see this. Maybe I would have been fine with it. Because uh, after the origin stuff, like when, you know, you get into the later stuff, which is basically just a remake of John Carpenter's, I think that stuff's okay. Like, I don't mind, you know, that's, it's just more, it's just a more like brutal take on John Carpenter's original. But I hate the opening so freaking much. I can't enjoy that second half. And and usually, like, by the time that comes, I just turn the movie off. Because I, I just say, because I'm trying it. I'm trying to get into it. And then I just can't. So I just turn the movie off. And um, I just hate all that stuff, guys. I hate the kid. Like, I, I what's his name? Like, Dag Ferch or something. Like, he's just so freaking annoying. And, like, just has such a punchable face. I just want to hit it every time I see him on screen. But I despise this movie. I will say, though, I could see myself potentially warming up to this movie in like 10, 15 years once I have a little bit more perspective. Like maybe they'll crank out 10 more Halloween movies that are absolute garbage. Like if they keep going down the same path, and I do have another Halloween film in here to talk about, they keep going down that Blumhouse path and they keep cranking out more shitty Halloween films. Like maybe someday I'll be like, you know what? Rob Zombie's Halloween wasn't so bad. It'll be like a Star Wars prequel situation because I appreciate those movies a lot more now since we've gotten the Disney um, Star Wars era. So, uh, but I don't like this movie still, but it remains in the collection because it's a part of the franchise. So that's why I keep it. All right, guys, let's talk about some A24 films. And look, I love A24 as a studio. There's a lot of movies that they've done that I love, but they also have movies that I just cannot stand. I despise um, Under the Skin as one of them. And there are people that say this is a masterpiece. They love this movie so much. Um, and the director of this is Jonathan Glazer. He just did a movie called Zone of Interest, which I wanted to see that movie because it was getting a lot of hype. And then I heard that he directed it and I was like, 
I'm good. I don't need to see this. And maybe it's a great movie. You guys can let me know in the comment section if you've seen it, but I despise this movie that much. I think that the only reason why people say that this movie's good is because Scarlett Johansson's like naked. In a very like small portion of this movie, you get to see like the outline of her naked body. Like you don't even really get to see it like fully lit or anything. So, um, but yeah, she's she's naked in the movie, and this is I, I don't know. It's just a disgusting film. Um, and it just, it, it goes into some like very like dark extreme territory and some territory that I just don't like. Um, like there's a certain scene involving a baby that when I was watching it, I just got super pissed and disgusted and I am all for like art guys, do whatever you want with your movies. That doesn't mean I have to like it though. Um, so I'm not saying they, that he shouldn't have been able to do that, but like there's a scene with a baby that I just thought was disgusting and I just didn't like it, um, after that at all. And other than that, it's just a boring drag of a movie and I don't get why people like this under the skin. It sucks. I hate it. I hate it. You know, Scarlett Johansson, I mean, she, she's a good actress anyway, so she's fine in the movie, but I just don't like the movie. Um, Midsummer is another one. I cannot stand this freaking movie. And th this one I'll admit is because so many people hype it up and say it's like a modern horror masterpiece and it makes me dislike the movie even more. Um, so maybe I would just like not like the movie very much, but the fact that everybody talks about this movie as like the next horror masterpiece and they wanna say it's up there with Hereditary, it's like, come the fuck on. It is not as good as Hereditary. It's not even close. And this is why I am not a fan of this young lady on the cover. I'm sure she's a sweet girl. I'm just not a fan of this actress, Florence Pugh. I despise her and everything that she's in, except for fighting with my family. That was okay. That just feels like a different Florence Pugh. Like ever since this movie, it just feels like her acting and her performances are just different than it was with uh, fighting with my family. She's always doing this like ugly, she's doing it on the cover right here. This like ugly cry face. It just gets on my nerves. Like that's how she acts. She's just like, She's just like crying the whole time. Like, it's just like, why are you crying so much, Florence? But anyway, uh, it's because she's in a shitty film like Midsummer. That's why. But I, I didn't like this movie. Like, it, it tries to be like all jokey and stuff. Like, in the middle parts, there's like, they're going for like punchlines and stuff. And then it gets like super, um, it gets weird, but it gets weird in a way that's like, oh, I'm being weird and edgy. Like, look at how weird I'm getting with this movie. It just feels so over the top. And it's like Ari Aster at one point, it feels like a parody of Hereditary because it's trying to rip off like very familiar beats um, that Hereditary did. And it just goes like so over the top with them. And you can just, you can just feel like I felt when I was watching this in the theaters, I was, I was like, Ari Aster is just trying to do the same shit over again. And he's just trying to take the same shit, like wrap it up and make it a little bit more extreme. And it just felt so forced. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It feels like forced horror um, to me. And then it kind of like turns into a stupid slasher film for like 30 minutes. And it's just tonally all over the place. I hated the ending. I thought it was stupid. And the biggest crime that it commits of all is the fact that it's trying to be like a Wicker Man like remake in parts. Like because the ending's like very reminiscent of the Wicker Man. But the Wicker Man... It's such a superior film, and I just feel like it it tries, but it fails on like every aspect of what it wants to be. And yeah, I just hate Midsummer. So let me throw it to the side. I've been talking about it too much. I didn't even talk about why I keep these in the collection. So I'm just an A24 fan. I'm an A24 collector. I like to keep these with the slip covers on. And um, that's pretty much the only reason. I just, I, and there may be one day where I'm like, screw it, and I just get rid of both of these. But um, like I said in the opening, Midsummer's one that I do kind of want to like. I want to see what everybody else sees, but um, I may revisit it at some point. I may revisit Under the Skin at some point, but I doubt it. But um, I'm just an A24 collector. I like to keep them with the slipcovers on. I've got some other A24 in here as well, but that's the reason there. That's a stupid reason, though. Uh, 28 days later, I keep in the collection because this is actually worth some money. Like this is worth like 60 or $70 it's going for on eBay. Um, so that's why I keep this. Now I just, you know, this is one that I can see myself maybe liking more someday, maybe appreciating more, but I was just, this is a movie that I watched when it came out and I was like, what is all the hype about? This isn't even scary. This looks stupid. It looks super low budget. Like I just didn't like it at all. Um, and then I tried to rewatch it like five years ago and I still didn't like it. I still can't see what everybody else sees in this movie. I just think it sucks. And I do have uh, the sequel over here. I have 28 weeks later on DVD. Now, the Blu-ray of this is also very expensive. Why are these so expensive? Because they're both Fox and they let them go out of prints because it's owned by Disney now. So there you go, guys. Um, 
And I think there's a double pack of both of them that's like going for like $100 or something. But if you have 28 days later in your collection on Blu-ray and weeks later, then you've got some you got some value in your collection because these are worth uh, quite a bit. So I keep this because at some point, it's a Danny Boyle film and I enjoy him as a director. So at some point, like I want to like this, but I just don't like it now. Um, I can see them doing a 4K of that at some point. Like if the Fox catalog gets freed up by Disney at any point in time. Um, this one might upset some people, um, but Natural Born Killers, I got two copies of this thing. Um, I, I don't like this movie. So I bought this at a Dollar General and this was like five bucks. It's a cool like Diamond Lux edition. And I think this one's worth some money too. Maybe not since the 4K came out, but it's a really cool edition. I never watched it. I never watched it because that 4K got announced. I'm like, I'll just watch the 4K when it comes out. But this is a really cool edition. I don't see myself getting rid of this one because I think it's kind of valuable. And it's a really cool edition. Like it's like a magnetic case that opens up. And yeah, um, I probably won't get rid of this one just because of that. So uh, like I said, as of right now. And I also got the 4K because I upgraded it. And I hadn't seen it by the time I bought the 4K. So I had two copies of this in the collection before. I watched the movie and this one was hyped up a lot and I just did not enjoy this film at all. I got ripped to shreds too for saying I didn't enjoy it when I reviewed it. People did not like my thoughts on Natural Born Killer. So I'm not going to get into it here. I just didn't like this film that much. It was hyped up. It had Woody Harrelson, who's one of my favorite actors, and Quentin Tarantino was writing. Oliver Stone's a capable director, done some really good films that I like. And I was just really let down. I just didn't like this movie. I thought it was really kind of silly if I'm being honest. Um, VHS 85, this one really disappointed me. I can't say I hate this one, but this one just really disappointed me, um, compared to 94 and 99, which I really enjoyed those. And I love the first two viral, not so much, but I would say that this one's worse than viral. Like I did not like this one at all. I thought they brought that they completely like emptied the horror, um, elements out of it. And it was just, it just felt like actiony. Um, and they went a little sci-fi and I just thought it was kind of stupid. Um, and there was like no horror in it. So I just didn't enjoy this one at all. Um, but I keep it in the collection because I have all the other VHS films on, on Blu-ray and maybe someday I'll rewatch them and do a ranking or something. You never know what's going to happen. So I just, I like to keep the, the franchises together. So that's, that's why that remains in the collection. And it's a cool slip cover too. It's a cool slip cover. All right. So we got Halloween Kills, guys. Yes, another Halloween film. This this franchise is just really close to my heart. Like, I, I love it so much. I was the biggest Halloween fan. And then Rob Zombie's Halloween came out, and I wasn't as big of a Halloween fan anymore after that because that one just changed my perspective on the franchise. Um, and then I got super hyped for Halloween 2018. Loved that movie in the theaters, even though I've kind of cooled on that movie um, over time. And then I got super excited for this because I thought the trailer was great. And I watched this on Peacock, and it started off good. I like the flashback stuff in the beginning, but after all that, like when the Evil Dies Tonight chants start, it just gets so stupid and over the top. And I, I'm fine with it being a stupid slasher or whatever, but like they, they led us to believe that this trilogy was going to be something more than that, and to just take it back to like Halloween Resurrection territory, Halloween Five, the Halloweens that nobody really likes that much. That I kind of like. I like Halloween Five, but admittedly that's one of the worst of the franchise to take it back to that like low grade slasher, you know, territory that, you know, I, I guess I just, I just expected more, you know, I thought Halloween 2018 was an actual film that kind of lived up to the legacy of the original. And this one just brought it back to stupid territory, which is like, if you're going to be stupid, fine. I like stupid Halloween films too. Like I like curse of Michael Myers and, and, uh, you know, resurrection and stuff, but it's like, that's not what you built me up to expect. And you're going to deliver a stupid chapter in the middle of this new trilogy. And the evil dies tonight stuff just really rubbed me the wrong way. It felt like a political agenda film. And I just thought it was stupid. Tommy Doyle, you know, and I like, um, uh, uh, Russ from vacation. I can't think of the, his name, Anthony Michael Hall. I, I like him, but I, I just didn't like his character at all. It's just, it's just very stupid, very stupid, very silly. Michael's cool. Like I like James Hugh Courtney as Michael. Like he's, he's cool. Some good kills. But beyond that, I just really hated this movie when I watched it. And I haven't watched it since the 4k, uh, came out. Cause I remember I reviewed the 4k. Um, this one, <laughs> this is one, this is one people will probably, most people will probably agree with me with this one. So I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but wonder woman, uh, 1984, um, I held off on buying this for the longest time. 
For the longest time, I held off on buying this. I think the Steelbook was at Best Buy for like a year or something. It was, it was at least a year. I used to comment on it every single Tuesday when I went in there uh, Blu-ray hunting. But I love the first Wonder Woman. My wife and I saw that in the theaters and we loved it. I thought it was so freaking awesome and cool. That No Man's Land sequence was incredible. Um, and I just thought it was a great movie. I thought Gal Gadot did a terrific job as Wonder Woman. I was very excited for the sequel. We watched it, I think, Christmas Day. Um, of 2020 on HBO Max because I, I don't know if it went to the theaters or not. I think maybe it had like limited screenings because that was the COVID era. But um, we watched it and I was like, how, how did this, this is the same director, right? You got the same, I think it was, I think Patty Jenkins wrote the movie, which she didn't write the first one, which is probably the problem. But I was like, this is the same director, the same creative team. Like what, what, what happened? Like this movie is awful. Like it's absolutely awful awful uh, compared to the first one. So yeah, I did not like Wonder Woman 1984. I do not think I'm alone with this one. I think there are some people that try to defend it and say, oh, it's a throwback to the Christopher Reeve Superman era, like the silly uh, superhero era. I'm like, that's not what we wanted. Like not, not following that first movie that was so serious and so felt so impactful for the superhero genre to take it back to like silly territory. Nobody wanted that. So why, why would you do that? The same thing with Halloween kills. Like you set us up for something serious and then you take it back to silly. Like people just, didn't, like, I'm not saying that we haven't had that before and we haven't enjoyed that before, but that's not what people wanted in that particular moment. So yeah, this movie sucks. Absolutely sucks. But somebody sent me this. Somebody sent me, I think this is like an overseas edition. Uh, I think this is like my first subscriber unboxing. If you sent this to me, let me know in the comment section. But really awesome steelbook. So yeah, I, I did not pay for this. Somebody sent this to me uh, to unbox on the channel. So I was like, you know what? I, I Again, a franchise thing. I got the first one. Now I got the second one. I don't think there's going to be a third one because uh, they're rebooting the whole universe. But at least I have both of them in my collection now. And I didn't have to pay for it. But will I keep it? I don't know. Maybe someday I'll get rid of that as well. Um, the Humans is an A24 film. This one I honestly might get rid of. I just can't see myself revisiting this one like ever. Like for, for any reason because it just sucked that bad. I hated this movie. My wife and I watched this like... On, on like a Wednesday morning at like 10 a.m., we almost fell asleep. It was just so freaking boring. It's it's like a stage play, and it's it's a one location movie, and I usually like those. Um, but the characters were so uninteresting, and the drama was so uninteresting um, that I just didn't care. I didn't care about what was going on or, or who was doing what to who, and and all the situations and scenarios. And the cast is is good. Uh, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Amy Schumer, but Stephen Yoon's really good. Richard Jenkins is usually good. Beanie Feldstein's, she's okay from what I've seen. That's Jonah Hill's sister. But the cast is good, but it's just, um, you know, it says an enthralling, what does it say? An enthralling and undeniable masterwork. Like, who? what pompous ass wrote that? Put it on the cover. Um, but yeah, I, I did not like this. And again, I know it's based on a play. It felt like a play, but... It just, uh, it didn't do it for me. But it's an A24 film. Like I said, I like collecting the A24s, keeping them in the collection with the slipcover. But maybe I'll get rid of this one at some point because I just really don't see myself ever rewatching that. We got the man um, who, sh who killed Hitler and then Bigfoot. I feel like I've talked about this one before. Um, you don't get anything with Hitler and you barely get any, any Bigfoot. So there you go. I love Sam Elliott, but the idea of Sam Elliott killing Hitler and then Bigfoot intrigued me and this movie did not deliver on either one of those things it's very boring and it's just it's a nothing kind of a movie so i do not like this film at all again that's not one that i hate but i don't like that movie very strongly this movie i hate this movie i hate with a burning passion i'll say this i'll say this before i show this one right here that i'm getting ready to show the three movies that i hate that i absolutely hate the rest of them i just strongly dislike Rob Zombie's Halloween, Under the Skin, and this fucking movie right here, <laughs> Rise of Skywalker, which I bought because it was a cool Walmart exclusive. Um, and again, it's a franchise thing. I have all the Star Wars films in the collection, so I wanted to complete the collection. Um, but I think this was a Walmart exclusive. Yeah, I said that right. Um, I did an unboxing of this on the channel. It's like one of my first videos, I think, on the channel um, before I had the physical media report and everything. But it's a cool addition. You got the 4K, you got the Blu-ray, got some special features on the disc, but I still never watched it. I've never, I have not seen this movie since the theaters. Um, this is absolute dog shit. I hate this movie so much. It made me hate the entire new trilogy, which I actually really loved 
The Force Awakens. I really loved that movie. And I liked uh, The Last Jedi. A lot of people didn't like Last Jedi. That was kind of a deal breaker for some people uh, with the new trilogy. But I liked it. I was interested in seeing where they took it from there. But because so many people didn't like it, um, you know, didn't like Ryan Johnson's take, like they backpedaled on everything and tried to like fix stuff that didn't really, I, I don't think needed to be fixed. And in doing that, they created an even bigger mess and the whole emperor coming back thing. Like, what the hell was that? Like what? He comes back like the first five minutes. There's no explanation. They tried to explain it in a book and then, well, he's a clone guys. He's a clone. Like you didn't tell us that in the movie. You didn't tell us that in the movie. You told us that in a book like six months later. Like, what the hell is that? What, how did you, how do you botch a trilogy that starts off so strong? Like, and this is, I, I compare this to Halloween. Like it starts off strong with Halloween 2018, Force Awakens. It gets divisive with The Last Jedi and Halloween Kills. There's a lot of people that love Halloween Kills. A lot of people that hate it, like me. Um, I kind of fell on the opposite side with The Last Jedi. I was interested. Um, now that this comes out, The Last Jedi makes no sense. And I don't like that movie now. The Force Awakens, I can still kind of watch as a standalone piece. But I don't like that as much either. And I just don't really have any desire to rewatch that trilogy because of where it ended up with this crappy-ass movie. I freaking hate this movie. I just think it's the worst Star Wars movie ever. It's one of those movies that makes you like question why you even like this franchise to begin with. It's like I can't even take the original trilogy as serious as I used to because of where I know it goes with these stupid movies and this stupid finale. The 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 Skywalker saga has ended. That's how they promoted this. So terrible, so freaking terrible. This is just one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life and such a terrible conclusion to a franchise that I've loved since I was like eight years old. So I I hate this movie. This is definitely, this is, pro I probably hate this more than Rob Zombie's um, Halloween, if I'm being honest. It's so freaking stupid. So stupid. I apologize if you like it, but I think it's so stupid. And guys, I, ha I had to throw this one in there last. Uh, Bubba Hotep. I, I just really don't like this movie. I was, I, I like, um... I like Bruce Campbell. I like the director and I like the Phantasm films. Who, who's the guy? But Don Coscarelli. I like him and some of his movies, but this movie just wasn't it for me. It's so incredibly boring. It's just Bruce Campbell laying in a hospital bed for like an hour and a half. Like there's flashbacks of him like taking over Elvis's identity. I just thought it was going to, I thought I was expecting more Evil Dead. I was expecting more Evil Dead, only Ash dressed up like Elvis. And he's going to be taking on some like demon mummies or something like that. That's what I was expecting. I did not get that. It's completely different. But this is one that maybe I didn't like as much because of my expectations. Um, so this is one that I'll revisit in a few years. That's why I keep it in the collection. And maybe I'll have different thoughts and opinions on it. So hold out hope that maybe someday I'll enjoy Bubba Hotep because I know a lot of people that do. I respect that. I I respect your opinion if you like Bubba Hotep. I just did not like this. I thought it was so boring. But again, I'll keep it in the collection because someday I may enjoy it and I do want to try to rewatch it um, at some point. But this movie right here, guys, look, I've done work myself up so much uh, from this video over this stupid movie. I'm burning this as soon as we get done. I'm taking it to the back office space style. I'm going to start hitting it with hammers. Then I'm going to light it on fire and uh, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to kill Rise of Skywalker like it killed my love for the Star Wars franchise. All right, guys, I'm done. That, that was a hard video to make because I was very hot. I was very heated all throughout of it. And I, I don't like being that angry. I just don't like being that angry. But look, guys, this is a video about stuff that I don't like, that I hate. So I think it warranted that level of anger. But I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Comment down below some movies in your collection that you don't like, that you keep for whatever reason. Let me know what they are in the comment section below. Turn on those bell notifications for all future videos. And follow me on all of my social media accounts. Those links are down below in the description. And we'll see you next time.